What's up guys, it's Twitter, hope you're doing well, today we're back in automation. And in today's video we are going to build another comment suggested engine. Can you build the OM617 inline 5 turbo diesel engine? Alright, so there's the plan, so let's see what we can do. The particular version we are going to be building is the OM617A turbocharged engine, and the subdivision of it is the OM617.950. So it was the particular model year of 1978. Other factors to keep in mind, this engine was produced from 1974 up to 1991, which is quite a surprising production run because its successor is the OM602, which was an inline 5 with another cylinder added. That's where the start of the OM606 did begin, if you want to know that. And above all else, this thing is quite a reliability beast. I've seen a lot of reports where these things will go 500,000 miles or a million miles on the, or essentially the original engine. So a couple other things we have to note with our engine build today is we are going to be using low quality 85 fuel and all our quality sliders are going to be on plus 15 to give this particular engine a good shot at making a lot of power. Now my power goals for this thing is at least 450 horsepower and torque number is which one we are going to be looking at the most is hopefully over a thousand because I have an idea that this thing is going to go very far into the power dips and goes. I've got an idea. Alrighty, so now we're quickly just adjusting our cam profile and then we're going to move over to the compression. I think I'm going to lower it down to about 9.0 to 1 compression ratio. Then we're going to go back and add some boost. And a particular thing I like about these engines, these Mercedes engines, these things will behave to power very differently to any American or Japanese engine. As you can probably search videos online, a lot of them in this particular configuration meaning all the older style Mercedes engines, even the newer styles too. You can really push those engines pretty hard before they break things. And I mean the newer Mercedes engines like your 6, I think it's a 647 or 642. Those things are stout units. I am not too sure how far you can push those things, but those things are pretty spicy. I mean the engine that comes to mind the most was all the V6, V8, V10, all those types of diesel engines. I mean, the most prevalent one was used in a tank. <laughs> yeah, you've heard it right. A V12 was used in a tank. It's a 42 liter, quite a brick of an engine. Now that thing, I wish I could do a video on that engine, but yeah, we don't have displacement big enough for 42.4 liters to be exact. But also other Mercedes engines that you can look at in the V6 form, I mean this one that was made from 2005 up to now is the OM642, that's a V6 diesel, 3 litre V6 diesel. And the other OM engines you can look at in the V8 configuration was the one that was made from 99 to about 2005, which was the OM628 and also the one that came after that was the OM629. Differences, model year, a little more power, and well, both are 4 litre engines, let me make that very clear. As you can see there, Mercedes has a boatload of diesel engines. They pretty much made diesel engines for a very long time, as long as I can remember. And what I like about Mercedes engines, you can, you can go and play with them. That's what I love about them. But anyways, as you can see here, we are finishing up our wonderful engine build here. We're just quickly running through all our last minute changes so we can ensure that this thing has a proper power curve and doesn't just, well, go everywhere whenever you're ramping it up on the dyno. Now, why did the reason why I adjusted my spring and lift tension is because I want a little more usable power band because I'm considering using this thing in a vehicle and at the end of it I, I want to see how reliable it is I truly want to see that because I've not pushed it very hard and we're not running on any well in my opinion 
spicier fuels. Now we're just quickly painting the engine as you can see and the colors I'm going with is blue on black so it's a blue valve cover of oh, very fresh it's a blue block color it's a green core black valve cover and uh, I think we're gonna also gonna do our timing cover and wrinkle black because I like how it looks on this particular engine. Always is a amazement to me whenever I look at an engine like wow those people actually took the time to paint it. That's that's that to me is real custom. So let's go quickly search for our wonderful chrome for our headers. Or do I want them black? Or do I want them blue? Or my signature yellow color. I like the blue. I think I'm gonna run the blue. I might change my mind. Let's see if I take the airbox away how it looks. Hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. I like it, but I think I'm gonna change it. Let's just see. Hmm. Let's put the airbag airbox back on. Nah, no, nah, nah. I'm just gonna go with my old traditional color. <laughs> which is my favorite yellow orangey color yeah there it is so now we're gonna slide on over and do two pulls of course one looking at the engine one looking at the graph I hope it sounds real good I've got a suspicion it's gonna sound good the only way to find that out is to go for it Let's go Nice and quiet, I do love that. Maybe we'll use this in a vehicle someday, but uh, for now guys, I would say thank you so much for watching and do consider to like, comment, share and subscribe. And as always guys, if you have any suggestions for cars or engines, do let me know down below. Anyways guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.